Welcome to Hawaii, everyone. Look alive. You're at the Motor Fest. Hello. The latest in some racing game series I've never played called The Crew came out, and it's got a free 5 hour trial that isn't available anymore because I make videos slowly. Desperate for content, I downloaded it. Let's give it a go. As you will soon discover, The Crew Motorfest loves cutscenes, so uh, we're just gonna fast forward through all of this. The game prompts me to customize my character, but since I don't care and I have roughly 4 hours and 58 minutes left on the clock, I just choose this guy. After a bit more talking, during right, which the everyone. game can't resist Dad, trying to advertise itself... And I'm not just reading from the Motorfest app here either, I tried them out before you arrived and... <laughs> here, this happens. let me show you. This playlist is a unique Motorfest experience. It's called Made in Japan. Okay, a couple things to unpack here, starting with... Why does this game handle like that? Motorfest has an extremely arcadey handling model, which is not my preference, but for some reason this game in particular is just very difficult for me to drive in. It's like every input is just a suggestion, and... Made in Japan is the way to experience Japanese car culture. Ah uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, the game will not shut up. Ever. You think it's just because we're playing the intro, but it really isn't. I played this game for the full five hours the trial allowed, and still the various NPCs could not resist talking my ear off. In races, and in free roam too. Also, and I'm sorry I have to cram so much into such a short amount of time before this part of the intro ends, what's wrong with the color grading in this game? I feel like I'm drowning. As you'll soon see, this game has a consistent problem with oversaturation and a weird color palette. In fact, this is this video's thumbnail. And here's what it looked like before I did the color correction. Driving continues to be difficult for me, but luckily the game is about to switch things up, so I get a second chance. and motorways was amazing. But the next playlist was Off-Roading Addict. A chance to race into the wild. So it's cross-country from Forza Horizon then. Got it. Indeed, quite a lot of this game seems to be uh, borrowed from everyone's favorite, least favorite open world racing game. You might have even noticed that Motorfest steals the term playlists for its race series. To carve your own path to explore the open expanse. And yes, thanks to this game's weird floaty handling, I did just manage to spin out in an arcade game. You would too, I promise. This game has an unfortunate mechanic called Nitro, which I use to drive straight into a tree, and as we'll discuss later, Nitro might be my single least favorite arcade racing feature. I'll get to that. Anyway, let's fast forward even more and just be glad I don't need to actually win these intro races. For this one I've been stuck in some weird futuristic formula car, which thankfully does not have nitro. It does have tire wear though, a feature we'll never see again in this video after this one short race. With only 5 hours to play the game, I most definitely did not have time to be thorough. The car still handles very badly, but I will mention that it's a lot more predictable than the previous two cars I've driven. I only crash a little bit. Like the tire wear, you won't be seeing any more pit stops in this video. I'm not even sure how I did that since I did not enter the pit lane. 
Next up, the game puts me in a Shelby Cobra, which the by now very annoying voiceover praises the feel of, as if I can feel anything with a handling model like this one. Also, seriously, what is this color grading? Why is it so yellow? Whatever. The next playlist is an oddly specific one focused entirely on... Lamborghini. A playlist to truly experience the iconic, the trailblazing. I'm running out of adjectives here. Glad to see I'm not the only one who can't be bothered to write a script sometimes. The interesting thing about... As soon as you saw that Lamborghini logo, you knew what this playlist was gonna be. Some <sighs> it never ends. Car designs in existence hey, wanna see something I only noticed while editing this? Clearly the AI too struggle with these driving physics. Actually, in general, the AI feel very forza y for a lack of a better way to describe them. They generally just stick to the racing line and don't do much else, and they don't pay attention to where you happen to be on the track. It makes for a very boring racing experience. They also have a really rubber bandy feel, but I'm not sure if that's actually what's happening or if it's just the nitro. Again, more later. Finally, we're done with the intro races. More talking awaits. Oh boy. <laughs> like what you saw? Well, those were just the tip of the iceberg. But we've got to go step by step. Follow me. Look around you. This is what it's all about. Cars, bikes, rides, and good vibes. You'll get to explore the festival soon enough. And let's not forget, we're in Hawaii. And there's no better place to express yourself. Show off your flair. Customize your ride. It's a car culture buffet. Keep up. We're going to go meet the star of the show. Your car, of course. Come on. It's time for you to pick your ride. Once you pick your car, I'll hand you over to Kara, your personal AI assistant. Okay, it's time to choose a car, and uh, I don't care. All the cars seem to drive nearly the same anyway, so I'll just pick this Honda because it happens to be in the middle. AI assistance engaged. All engines go. Oh yes. I'm telling you, it never ends. After our hair renders in, we need to choose a playlist to start with. Hello driver, I'm Kara. Let me assist you in choosing a playlist. I'll mention it here because there isn't time to again. Yes, there's a Donut Media playlist. I won't play it in this video, but I have seen it on YouTube and it is truly obnoxious. Once again choosing completely at random on account of not caring, I choose this, another brand specific one focusing on the Porsche 911. Okay, we're in free room now. Surely we'll get a few seconds of silence, right? Making this next playlist. Hey, Motorfest? I'd appreciate it if you'd stop annoying everybody in the audience. That's my job. I can't remember what I was trying to demonstrate here, but this game unfortunately defaults to automatic shifting with brake to reverse, which I hate. So I switch to sequential shifting because I don't think the game has full manual, unless you happen to have an H shifter, which I do not. A not so fun little discovery. The controls section of the settings does not actually let you rebind controls, so it looks like you have to actually stick with this game's default control scheme presets. That's not actually the case, there's some other completely different menu you can rebind things in, but I haven't noticed that yet. I should probably mention, I'm just letting the game guide me to the next race in the playlist because there's frankly nothing else to do in this game, but I think you are technically free to go do whatever you want at this point. I'm just not doing that. Eventually, after being completely annihilated by an AI traffic car, I make it to our first actual race. No, wait, sorry, this is Motorfest. Gotta watch another cutscene first. Here we go. Of course, we're all huge 
Porsche fans, and it means a lot to us to have such an incredible manufacturer joining the adventure. with the 9-11. We had no choice but to reveal it to you. You know, sometimes when I play a racing game, I actually want to get around to racing at some point. What a new idea. Let's move on to another activity. But no, that entire mission was just the cutscene. We have to try it even more to get to the actual race. This game is so exhausting. Shipping from Stuttgart, Germany to Hawaii took a little bit longer than they thought, so they've actually just arrived. Even while watching through footage to write this script, all of the talking is genuinely getting on my nerves. Ah well, I'm pretty sure that now we finally get to race. Let's see what that's like. No, nope, another cutscene. The game has loaned me a car, which you'd think is just because this playlist specializes in Porsche 911s, but no, every single playlist race does this. Even if you already have the car it wants you to use, which happens a lot because most of the playlists require you to actually buy a car to unlock them, it'll still loan you a stock version of that car. Brilliant game design. Anyway, the racing. Um, yeah, it's racing. I don't really know what else to say. It's the same as the intro stuff, except now we're supposed to finish in the top three to move on. The racing in Motorfest is genuinely so boring to me that I cannot really narrate anything, so let's just scrub through the footage until... Amazing driving skills! Yeah, thanks. I think I saw it go back a bit. Yep, now it's time to complain about Nitro. See, the problem with Nitro, other than that I don't often remember to use it, is that it essentially makes any normal racing irrelevant. Why would a pass matter when the AI can just come rocketing past you with Nitrous a few moments later? For that matter, why bother overtaking normally when you, too, can just press the Go Faster button and guarantee yourself the position? I get that it's a staple of the arcade racing genre, and I'm just not into that, but still, I can't help but think that Nitro is a very large part of why I find this game's racing so boring. It also feels unfair. Imagine you're in the lead of a race, take the final corner decently quickly, and you're onto the final straight. You're gonna win, right? So you can just sit back, relax, and... Nope, they I used Nitro. Too bad. With our first race over, we go to the next race. It's honestly amazing how little there is to do in this game. In 
I'm going to start editing really heavily now, by the way. So far, I've turned around half an hour of gameplay into six and a half pages of script, meaning I'd estimate we're probably around the 13 or 14 minute mark in the video. Given that there's five hours of footage, I think I'm going to hurry it up. You don't want to be here all day. The next race is another Forza Horizon-style cross-country race, which is very boring and also fairly easy. After the race ends, there's an annoying pinging noise. This is the radar alerting me to some treasure nearby. After searching for a bit, the treasure turns out to be some upgrades. This is a good time to talk about this game's upgrade system, which... Well, I don't like it very much. Basically, through either racing or finding this treasure stuff in free roam, you can unlock performance parts. The problem is that this is done per car. In other words, no matter how many hours I spend in this Honda, even if I completely max out its upgrades, I'll have to unlock everything over again for any other car I drive. Now granted, none of the upgrades feel as transformative as they do in Forza, so you're not missing out on much, but it adds even more repetition to this already very tedious game. Eventually, I get to the next race, which has me race a Porsche against some muscle cars. This race won't be skipped through quite as quickly because, as it turns out, something weird has happened. The game has gotten challenging. No, I'm not saying that it has any difficulty progression, I don't think it does. I'm just saying that for whatever reason, I struggled a lot in this race. The AI felt faster than me, and my struggle with Motorfest's handling was really starting to get to me. On my first try at this race, I finished dead last. So, fine. Let's mess with some settings to see if I can make this feel a little more natural. I turn off a few assists and consider disabling Nitro before I realize that the AI will probably still use it, making races unwinnable. While I'm at it, I mute voices to try to save my ears, and then go through and max out the graphics other than motion blur. Apparently I forgot to do that when I started. I'm not changing the ones that need a game restart, though I really don't care enough. Actually, you know what, here's an idea. The game has wheel support. I think I may be the only person who will ever do this, but let's give it a try. By the way, this device manager menu, it turns out, is where you rebind controls. I have no idea why it isn't in the controls menu, but that's Motorfest for you. After I've got my wheel controls set up, I discover something truly special. The game can detect my paddle shifters fine when binding controls, but for some reason it won't let me shift with them. As a result, I have to become possibly the only Motorfest player in the world to use a wheel and automatic shifting. As it turns out, while I do find a wheel more natural to drive with, the handling is still horrible either way. My second attempt at the race is also a failure, and so, shamefully, I have to lower the AI difficulty in an arcade racing game. Ordinarily, I'd just try to keep driving until I got used to it, but 5 hour time limit and all, I want to get as much done as I can, and restarting races is not helpful for that. Okay, I won that time. I also win the next race, maybe I lowered the difficulty too much, but to be fair, the racing was not very interesting anyway. That said, I do have an interesting idea before this next one. What does this game drive like with all of the assists on? We're talking automatic braking, automatic steering, everything. All I should have to do is use the throttle. Okay, let's see what happens. Hmm, don't think that's how this is supposed to work. I suspect this has something to do with my wheel, which was still getting force feedback. This made it move on its own, which gave the game inputs that the auto steering has to fight, causing more force feedback and so on. That's my theory anyway. Once I start vaguely turning the wheel in the right direction on a second attempt, it starts working pretty much like it's supposed to, though I think it defeats the purpose if I have to steer anyway. The game informs me that thanks to my legendary driving skills, I have a reward waiting for me after the race. After fixing all of my assist settings again, I do a little more driving and arrive at my reward, which is another race. Great. 
But first, a cheesy cutscene. And yes, apparently muting voices in Free Roam also mutes them in cutscenes, which is an interesting choice to say the least. This race actually took me a few tries, even on such a low AI difficulty. The nitrous overtaking was particularly bad in this race, and I found that if I made even a single mistake, I would pretty much instantly be left behind. I really can't tell if this race is difficult on purpose or not. Given how uneven the difficulty has been so far, I'm inclined to go with not. Anyway, I do eventually win, and I'm informed that I have unlocked a car. But of course I have to drive there. Wonderful. The game even tells me what the car is, so it's not like it's trying to build up suspense for the reveal. It's just making me do extra free room driving for no reason. Very annoying. So I unlock my car, but not before, you guessed it. Another cutscene. Yeah, I'm gonna stop showing you these things in full, they're just way too long. Great, now what? Well, I've got some money from doing all these races, so let's go to the vehicle shop and do more complaining. You see, the game will tell you that it has over 600 cars, and while that might technically be true, in reality the number is way lower, maybe under a third, I'm not sure. They're not lying exactly, the problem is that the majority of the cars have several variants that are counted as separate cars in the total. Also, a frustratingly large number of them are locked behind the previous crew game, and so unless you've played that, you can't get them. Most of the vehicles are also too expensive for me to get during the trial period for the game, so I make my choice entirely based on what parts of the game I can unlock. Yes, Motorfest is not just a car game. Hilariously, the game absolutely does allow you to try to drive a boat on land, not that it works, but once I've switched into something a bit more suitable, I can drive over to the new race this purchase has unlocked. The Motorfest is all about car culture. Or so you think. And yes, I unfortunately turned voices back on. That silent cutscene was just too awkward. Also, you ever feel like some games just insist on trying to market themselves to you? It's a Motorfest series. And you know what that means. Championship, podium, glory. It's a large part of what burned me out on Forza Horizon, and this game does it so much more. It's one of the worst things about it to me. It just feels so pointless. I know this is the free trial, so I guess it makes slightly more sense to try to convince me to buy it, but this is just the full version with a timer. Players who have already bought the game, for $70, which is ridiculous, will still be marketed at this way. It just feels so artificial and corporate, really not something I want to have in a game. Yeah, so this playlist has, from what I can tell, the entirety of the boat and plane racing in the game. This is probably fine because, as you'll see, it's not very good, but the inclusion of other kinds of vehicles is the one thing that really differentiates this game from the other open-world racers it's trying to clone. You'd think they'd want to focus on it a little more. The game loans me my own boat and then throws me straight into a boat race, complete with some commentary. Hi everyone, this is Sean Battler, and this is Bob Schwartz. We're talking to you live from Hawaii. Okay, so, as it turns out, calling this a race is maybe stretching the definition. You see, apparently, if I hold down on the D-pad to trim the boat, whatever that means, I go faster. Boats also have nitro, again, use that, go faster. And the AI, apparently, forget to use both of these, making the boat races the easiest events in the entire game, at least in the five hours I played. I have no idea how boats are supposed to handle, having never, uh driven one, but based on all the tips the game is showing me, I'm guessing it's supposed to be more complicated than it actually feels here. In Motorfest, the boats essentially just handle like cars, except not. I don't know how to explain it better than that, but if you just pretend you're driving a car on water, you'll probably do fine. 
Pretty soon, predictably, the announcers start praising my driving, or would that be sailing? Because this is a very corporate arcade game, and so of course it's going to try to feed my ego to keep me playing. Joke's on them, my free trial runs out in less than three hours. We're off to a beautiful start. I didn't have my morning coffee, but with this kind of show, I don't think I'll need one. The next event uses a plane, and you might not want to watch this. I've switched back to the controller for the plane since it needs more than one input access, and unfortunately for everyone, I don't understand the plane handling at all. It's extremely unnatural. It feels like whenever I steer the plane, it rotates around a point that isn't even a part of the plane itself. It's also slow, unresponsive, and generally just very confusing to fly, and so I do a fair amount of crashing. As you can see, some of the risky segments here require flying real close to the mountains. Eventually, I discover that you can fly right through these checkpoint rings, and that makes things a lot easier. Somehow, despite several crashes, I still finish in a decent fourth place for the time trial. While we're showing off this game's alternate modes of transportation, I go ahead and buy the cheapest motorcycle I can find, which pretty much just handles like a car again, just without traction loss. It's like driving a bike in GTA, except in this game you can't even fall off. I do another boat race, once again winning very easily because boat races are easy, and then move on. The next event would use planes again, and I refuse to do that. Instead, after spending some time taking a bunch of thumbnail shots, you can never have too many if you're going to be locked out of the game immediately after filming, I move on to a new playlist, one which the NPC in my ear will not ever shut up about. A playlist is ready to try. Let's go try it. No time for guessing games. The container you're driving to is your entry to the American Muscle Playlist. In a few minutes, you'll enter the world of muscle cars. Beware, you may never want to leave. Muscle cars are more than just a 70-year-old car trend. It's an entire chunk of the American car culture. To tons of people, muscle cars are the epitome of what a vehicle should represent. Allure and power, with some crucial tweaks and just the right amount of outside-of-the-box thinking. Cars in their fullest might and glory. There's no standard definition of a muscle car. They are sometimes described as American-made two-door sports cars with a powerful engine. But that's a little reductive, don't you think? Others define them by their V8 engines and rear-wheel drivetrains. The truth is, muscle cars are a philosophy. It's a creed more than anything else. With such an aura, no wonder American Muscle is one of Motorfest's flagship playlists. Wanna experience it for yourself? Well, good news! We're almost there! And finally, we're here. <laughs> Get a load of this cutscene, it's incredible. All of a sudden, I'm feeling very patriotic. While driving to the first race, the narrator continues to talk, informing me that this playlist is sponsored by Jim. Jim owns cars. Jim can afford all of this because... Jim is also the host of the playlist. Yes, that's right. Another NPC to talk while I'm trying to drive. 
and Jim loves to talk. Yeah, Jim here. I'm guessing you've been told I'll be tagging along. That is my car you're driving after all. All right, let's get straight into it. Rock on! In fact, Jim is infuriating. I don't think I even go 15 seconds without him saying something. And so, after constant NPC dialogue for the last several minutes of gameplay, I finally give up and mute the voices again for good this time. You're welcome. The rest of the race is pretty much without incident, so let's move on. Judging by script length, this video has probably more than passed the 30 minute mark by now. The next race is something a little different. It's a drag race where I have to beat a target time. It's basic mobile game stuff, do a burnout and keep this line in the green zone, then launch at the right time and shift up while the game apparently steers for you. I did of course have to switch to the controller for this since the game still doesn't register my paddle shifter inputs. I struggled a lot with this until remembering that literally everything has nitro in this game, at which point I demolished the target time despite the game criticizing me for every single shift. The next event in the playlist uses this car, a Mustang, just like in the previous two events. One thing I've noticed, aside from being an ad for itself, the Crew Motorfest is also a Ford ad. I hope Ford got their money's worth. The next event is ridiculous. Yep, that is a monster truck Mustang. The monster truck handles terribly, but otherwise this is once again a boring race and having played for the better part of four hours I end my first session here. The next morning I re-enter the game to discover another cutscene. Wonderful. And then I unlock some arcane fifth mode of locomotion. Walking? What is this? Anyway, we're in the car meet, a big room full of Mustangs, and DeLoreans, and Mustangs, and DeLoreans, and Jeeps, and Mustangs, and Mustangs, and DeLoreans again. Eventually I get bored of DeLoreans and Mustangs, and my legs are sore from all of this walking anyway, so I leave and get back to driving again. This time we're on our way to something called a Hawaii Scenic Tour because I'm running out of things I can do without buying more cars. This Ford GT, another Ford we could have guessed, will also be the fastest car I drive in this video on account of having nowhere near enough time to earn millions of whatever this game calls its currency. Interestingly, after sleeping on it, I've apparently gotten much more of a feel for Motorfest's handling model during this much shorter second session. Don't get me wrong, I still don't like it at all, but I'm not crashing quite as much anymore. I'm even mostly remembering to use the nitro. Still, it does say a lot about the handling that I don't feel all that much difference between that Ford GT, a supercar, and this little Volkswagen bus I'm driving for the second race in the playlist. As much as I hate to interact with other people, this is a multiplayer game, and I think this pseudo-review would feel incomplete if I did not at least try its weird Battle Royale game mode. Yes, you heard me right, it has a Battle Royale mode. Of course it does. Once I register for one, I have to wait a while, although to this game's credit, while my last Horizon game was the fourth one, Motorfest does at least have a significantly better multiplayer connection time than FH4 had. After a little more waiting, this happens. Huh? But what am, what am I supposed to do here? Apparently this is a battle royale thing, and I eventually read the little prompt at the bottom of the screen to drop in. So that's what I do, probably breaking my spine in the process. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now other than crash into people, so I guess I'll crash into people. By the way, you may have noticed I have a team in this game mode. I don't know why, since I can't think of much teamwork you can do in all of this confusing chaos. But the good news is I have a shot at winning, despite likely being the least competent player in the whole event. 
some bonuses drop, whatever that means, and I ignore them because I simply do not have the capacity for strategic thinking required by a battle royale. Is that what the bonuses do? Who knows. I am informed that the fight arena is shrinking, but it doesn't matter. I am now out. We could watch my teammates do whatever teammates do, but that, like most of this game, turned out to be very boring, so let's just skip ahead to some regular gameplay again. After another meaningless cutscene, we're starting another playlist, this one focusing entirely on Japanese cars. A whole lot of muted talking later, a race begins. It's probably the closest racing I've had yet, not that that's saying much, but in the end I win, and with just 20 minutes or so left, I don't think I have time to do much more of this. Instead, I briefly take a look at this game's microtransaction-y second currency, which I almost forgot to get footage of given that I'm obviously not going to buy any, and then I use the regular in-game currency to buy one last car. Since Motorfest likes the Ford Mustang so much, let's humor it. Not that it matters, we're probably going to cut to the game ending right about, uh, now. As the game counts down my last five minutes, I just sort of drive aimlessly. You can't call it joyriding if you're not having fun. Finally, there's just one thing left to do in the crew Motorfest. So, I reinstalled Forza Horizon 4 all these years later just to make this outro since it's clearly the game Motorfest wants to be. What are my final thoughts? Well, as you've probably- hang on, this isn't quite Motorfesty enough. There we go. As you've probably noticed, I don't like the game very much. To start with, Motorfest is an assault on the senses. It hurts my eyes with its insanely saturated color grade, and it hurts my ears with its chaotic audio mixing, sound effects, and constant chatter from the NPCs. The handling is terrible, at least in my opinion. Depending on your level of comfort with arcade physics, you may feel differently. To me though, everything I drove felt exactly the same. Even the plane I couldn't fly basically just felt like driving a car in three dimensions. Its worst offense, though, is simply the crime of being boring. At no point during the entire making of this video did I really particularly care. No matter how much the game throws at you, no matter how much it tries to grab your attention with its flashy colors and voiceovers to try and hype you up, in the end it's a repetitive game where nothing happens, over and over again. It has a car list over 600 strong that turns out to be probably less than 200 unique vehicles if you don't count variants and don't own the previous game. It has a $70 price tag plus microtransactions, but feels like a cheap mobile game ripoff of a series I don't even like that much to begin with. It is set in Hawaii, but Hawaii also happens to be mainland USA and Japan and anything else the playlist calls for all while the game tells you how much it celebrates the culture of Hawaii. It has four different categories of vehicle, yet still focuses almost exclusively on cars, which defeats the purpose. It has cutscenes that, while generally obnoxious and pointless, seem to take up about as much time as the races themselves, while still not being quite as boring. It is a game that pretends to have a soul, but does not. On the other hand, I played Forza Horizon 4 for two years or so before realizing I couldn't stand the game, so what do I know? For now, thanks for watching and goodbye.